Hi, John with eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Curt Class 1 receiver hitch on our 2019 Chevrolet Volt. So first impressions of the Curt hitch. I like the gloss black powder coat on this. It matches the gloss black finish on our bumper on the Volt. Um, I also like the reinforced collar on these Curt hitches. Um, there is another hitch available, a draw tight hitch. It has more of a satin finish to it, uh, but it doesn't have the reinforced collar on it. Um, and this, these inch and a quarter hitches are going to be good um, to get you into the world of accessories as far as maybe bike racks and cargo carriers. If you want to expand your options, we do have an eco hitch that's a two inch square receiver and it comes through actually a little bit higher on the bumper. Uh, it's going to give you a little bit more ground clearance and there's a whole world of accessories available for that style of hitch uh, with better ground clearance and folding capabilities. So let's take a closer look at the hitch here. This is an inch and a quarter. That's going to be standard, industry standard hole. Um, it accepts a half inch pin and clip, which isn't included. So if you're towing a trailer, you're going to need to pick one of these up. We have these here at eTrailer. If you're looking at cargo carriers or bike racks, most of those are going to include an anti-rattle pin with them. These chain hooks will accept a medium duty clevis style and the standard S-hook. So let's look at some weight ratings on this Curt hitch. Um, as far as tongue weight rating, that's 100 pounds. Now, that's going to be the force that's actually pushing down on our hitch. Um, that's good enough for one or two bikes uh, on a bike rack or a light-duty cargo carrier. Um, as far as uh, trailer weight rating, that's going to be 1,000 pounds. Now, that's the trailer and the gear. So if you're doing some light-duty towing, say with a utility trailer or a kayak trailer, that's going to be more than enough to get those around. Okay, next let's get some measurements on the Curt hitch here. First one I like to do is going to be the ground clearance measurement. That's going to be from the concrete up to the inside of the top collar. And we're looking at 10 and a half inches. The other measurement I like to get is from the center of the hitch pin hole out to the edge of the back of the bumper. Um, in, this, in this instance, it's going to be five and a quarter inches. Now, these measurements are going to help you when you're choosing a ball mount or choosing a bicycle rack or a cargo carrier. So final thoughts on the Curt hitch. I like this hitch. It matches the car nicely. It almost looks like a factory setup. It's going to expand your cargo carrying, your trailer towing if that's what you want to do. And overall, as far as the install goes, it's not too complicated. Now, there is some stuff as far as taking the bumper fascia off, which is kind of daunting, but you can do this. We will show you how to do it. Um, and we've got some tips and tricks along the way. So if you want to see how it's done, keep watching. Okay, so we went ahead and pulled our Volt onto the lift inside here. Now you can do this on your driveway. You don't need a lift necessarily. We're just doing this so that you can, makes it easier for you to see what we're doing. We're gonna go ahead and begin by removing the seven millimeter fasteners here. You're gonna have these along the center of the bumper here. Now, once we get past the tailpipe here, they switch over to a T15 Torx bit. Let's go ahead. We're going to have three of these that we remove on this side. And you're going to have three on the driver's side in the same location. Now, moving to the passenger side of the car here, we're going to go ahead and remove five T15 Torx screws here. You've got four that run up. You've got one in the middle here. Now with the T15 screws removed, we went ahead and peeled back the inner liner and it's going to expose a seven millimeter nut right here that is connecting the fender to the bumper. We'll go ahead and loosen this. Now keep in mind, everything we do on one side of the car, uh, we're going to be doing to the other side. Next, we're going to go ahead and flip up the hatch, and we're going to be removing our tail light here. That's going to be three T15 Torx screws that are holding this on. One here with a washer. And another one here. and a third one here. Now these taillights come out 
when you pull straight back, but you might have to give it a little bump here to kind of loosen it up. Like that. And then you'll have one clip that we need to disconnect, pull the red pin back, and then pinch with your thumb here and remove it. So with the tail lights removed, our next step is to remove the rear fascia. Now, we put some blue painter's tape along the edges on both sides. That's gonna help us protect uh, from scratching as these bumpers come off here. So come down to the edge of the wheel well. I have a plastic trim tool. Um, you may need this, you may not, but there is a black tab in here that sometimes they wanna get stuck and hung up. And you can just go in and press down with them. Just work your way up the edge of the bumper. Now we've already gone ahead and done this on the other side, and it's a good idea to have a helping hand as we go. We're going to go ahead kind of lift. You can see the tabs here. Kind of had to lift and pull back at the same time. Now, on each side, we're going to have an electrical connector here. Pull back on the red tab. Pinch down in the center. And pull out. We'll go ahead and set this off to the side. And I wanted to show you on our particular model here, we had another connector on this side. Uh, again, you're just going to push down on the center and pull out, but it was different from the other side, and I just wanted to show that. It comes apart like that. Okay, our next step, uh, I went ahead and placed a red cam buckle tie-down strap under the exhaust here to support it. We are going to remove the exhaust bracket here. This is 13 2 13 millimeter bolts. And I went ahead and sprayed the isolators with silicone. If you don't have silicone, you can use soapy water. That's just gonna help us get these isolators off here. Go ahead, give it a wiggle, we'll tug up and pull it off. That way, we're able to get to our brackets. With our exhaust hanger out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and remove our impact beam. This is a 15 millimeter socket. Now, I went ahead and left one bolt one nut over here, hand tight, just so it didn't come flying off. Go ahead and remove this. Set this off to the side. Now we'll take our hitch, we'll kind of line this up on either side. This goes on first, and then we'll go ahead and grab our bumper beam and place that on over the hitch. Hand tighten these on either side before we torque them up. Okay, with the impact beam back up here, make sure your hitch um, is centered on your car. There could be a little bit of play left and right. Now, we went ahead and already did that. We're going to go ahead and snug these up and then torque them to the specs outlined in our installation manual. Go ahead and get these torqued up. Now with the impact bumper torqued up, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our exhaust hanger bracket. Go ahead and slide these on first. Then we'll just lift up and set it on the bracket and align our bolt holes. Go 
ahead and get these torqued to the specifications outlined in our installation manual. Now once our hitch is tightened down, we're going to have to trim this lower panel here. I went ahead and marked on this with a paint pen so I know where to trim. I'm just using some aviation snips. You can use a, a Dremel tool or whatever else. This stuff cuts pretty easy. And then with that cut, we can just kind of test fit. If you need to trim a little bit more, you can. Looks like we're gonna be okay here. Now, as far as installing the hitch, we're pretty much done with that. The only thing that we have to do now, the next steps, is gonna to be to reassemble the car uh, the same way that we took it off. Now, just some things to remember. Don't forget to hook up your connectors on either side. And then when you're placing the fascia back on the car, don't forget there's a hitch down here. So your bumper needs to go on top just come to the middle, start with the middle, and then work your way to either side. And that's it for our look at the Kurt Class 1 receiver hitch on our 2019 Chevrolet Volt.